I recently returned to photography and have been pleasantly surprised with the amount of films I've been developing to the point where I discovered that I had nowhere to store them and ended up with rolls of uncut films lying around gathering dust getting damaged getting lost having them like that is a real real disincentive to scanning and further working on your photographs back in the day we'd use these negative preservers that's what they used to call them negative preservers uh, this is actually a negative preserver with the very first roll of film that I developed in 1984 so nearly 40 years old, 36 years old. Uh, they keep the, as you can see, the film's in pretty good condition. The challenge is, is that these preservers are relatively difficult to find now. Shops don't really have them. And when you do find them, they end up being close to one or $2 a sheet. The other challenge with these is that they are standard size A4 in this dimension but they're wider than A4 in the other dimension. So this is a standard A4 ring binder. And you can see that the edge of the film is just sticking out past it there. Back in the day, you could purchase, back in the day, you could purchase um, folders specifically designed for the negative sheets. I haven't been able to find these. They may be out there, but I haven't been able to find them easily. So, price and availability have been difficult for me. A company in Adelaide, South Australia, sells some very nice negative preservers, slightly different, but basically the same. The company's name is Albox, A-L-B-O-X, and these preservers are made from acid-free plastics. This particular packet of 25 will cost you between, well, one off, about $17, and you get discounts with more. I bought four packets of these and got them for $15 each. I also bought some other things and the postage from Adelaide was about $25, but I'm still way ahead in price of those other negative preservers available. What attracted me to these is that they offer storage solutions for them as well. And they offer two different variations. One is a storage box with a folder. This is black, it's available in uh, several different colors and you can see that a three it's actually a three ring binder that holds the preservers nicely that's a packet of 25 in there by s by my estimation this should fit a hundred rolls of film so that's pretty efficient i bought both sorts because i'm interested in uh, comparing them and i wanted to find out and i could do a review on it the other type is a it's a box and the preservers fit onto a tray and it's basically exactly the same as the other one this is a bit firmer all of these are made out of uh, acid free um, archival plastics okay i ended up going around and finding all of the films that I've developed since November 2018 and I've done over 40 and here they are in this archival box okay so that's 50 uh, two packets of uh, 25 and I've filled up most of those already as you can see there's room on that to have another 50 easily so that one packet could do a hundred a hundred negative uh, pages while we're looking at negative pages I've been going through my old um, films from 36 years and uh, in general they've been holding up well the only issue that I've had is fungus because I didn't store them well 
I'll be doing a video on, uh, well, I've already done one video on refreshing silica gel. I'll be doing more because managing humidity is a really important part of keeping your, your camera equipment, lenses in particular, and your film in good quality for the future. I'll be doing a, a video on that soon. Back to this, when you get your negative pages, when I got my box, I was just spent, I've just finished spending two or three days trying to work out what the, what the order of the photographs is, the roles that I've taken, and I couldn't remember, but they're in an approximate order and life goes on, so I've sort of worked it out. I've got the first one right. The first four or five rolls I've worked out, the last four or five rolls, the rest are just in random order. When you do your negatives, my advice is, as somebody that's going back and looking at stuff they did 36 years ago, number each page from one to whatever. The information that you think you need probably isn't... Uh, isn't what you need in 36 years time. So I wrote down stuff like what the developer was and the dilution and the amount of time and the temperature on the top of a lot of those pages. I don't care about that anymore. What I care about, you don't have to write what the film is by the way because the film tells you what the film is. What you need to know is when it was taken, month and year is close enough, a year, don't need a day, and where the photographs were taken. And if necessary, if there's anybody in the photographs that you might want to identify in the future. So if it's a street photograph, for instance, you only really need to say this was taken in April 2020 um, and it was taken in the, in my case, Sydney CBD or Town Hall or Wynyard or whatever taken at Coogee Beach, taken at Belmora Beach, taken at Wiley's Bar, it's all the different stuff. So you can identify the places because that, that is the information that you will end up forgetting. On the issue of going through your old photographs and looking what you're interested in, 36 years ago I believed I was interested in architecture and minimalism and so I have got hundreds of rolls of film of incredibly boring ordinary photographs and I go through pages and now this is all film 30 years ago you think films expensive now it was way expensive back then going through pages and pages and pages of ordinary images and I get excited every now and again by a photograph that I see what's in that photograph people people doing things so Ah, uh, it's a street photograph. Street photography is good for that. Um, not necessarily people that I know, but I'm in a park and there's people in the park and I've photographed some people playing with people. My advice is if you want to... Any photograph that you take now will end up being historic by accident. Take photographs of people doing things. Uh, street photography. If you do street photography, just don't sort of stand on a corner and take people. Photographs of people doing things are absolutely awesome. And from a historical perspective, they're quite valuable in the terms of cultural knowledge. Okay, uh, you, you might be able to sell one in the future. So I'm going through and finding lots of pictures of people and stuff, a bit of street photography. Oh, by the way, they didn't call street photography street photography back then. It was just photography that you happen to be standing in the street for. Um, so this whole street photography thing, particularly with film, is a bit of a new invention. It's a good invention, but it's a new invention. Well, it's not invention, it's a new label for something that's been around for forever. So my recommendation is get your negatives sorted, cut them, sleeve them, put a number, chronological, the number you shouldn't have problems with, I mean, you know, hey. Put down where the photographs were taken. I just write on the sleeves. If there's any other information you might need to know, for instance, some rolls for film were taken for film testing or lens testing, I'd write that on the up here as well to give me a perspective. If you've made it this far, thank you very much. Please like and subscribe. I'll be putting more videos up soon. I'm deliberately 
trying to not do equipment reviews. The world has enough equipment reviews. I mean, this is sort of an equipment review, but it's not a camera, it's not a point and shoot camera. It's not, it's not a camera and it's not a lens. Um, I'm trying to do something different. I'm trying to get some content out there uh, in the process of me learning video production and stuff like that. Thank you very much.